Hi, I'm going to share with you on how we can illustrate uh, the scheduling algorithm of the shortest remaining time first using a gun chart. All right? So, usually you'll be given uh, a process scheduling table, something like this, with the uh, showing you the CPU burst time and the arrival time of each of the uh, processes. So, before we start to draw the gun chart, it's always good that you calculate the total of the CPU burst time, right? So that you can actually plan for your uh, the length of your gun chart. Okay, so now I have the uh, six plus three plus four plus two, so I have a total of fifteen milliseconds here, right? So I'm going to begin with uh, zero and end with fifteen. So for your case, you can actually put a skill with the one centimeter equivalent to one milliseconds, right? And you can draw up the, uh, the gun chart here. Okay, so how we're gonna start here, um, shortest remaining time first, it's almost having a, a same concept as shortest drop first, just that, um, you know, you look for a lower CPU burst time, right? So one might, you know, look into uh, CPU burst time of two milliseconds because uh, it's having the lowest one, which is D, followed by process B, right, with having a three, and followed by C, having four, and A, followed by um, six, right? So, hey, Wait a minute, you see that um, at time equals zero, D actually hasn't arrived, okay? So the only uh, process that arrived at time equals zero is actually A, all right? So no doubt that A has to be going first in this case, right? So let's put in A, right, as the uh, starting point here to go in. And by the way, before you uh, actually start each process, it's good that you indicate uh, the arrival time of each of the process ID, right? So that it, it becomes like a reminder to you uh, what are the arrival time for each processes, right? For so for this case, I'm going to start with A, right? I'm going to indicate with an arrow here, so that it actually arrives at time equals zero, okay? Then followed by one at B and followed by two at C and D. All right. So initially A is the only job at the queue, All right? So it's gonna go for the execution. All right? Okay. Now, so because the shortest remaining time first, it's a kind of uh, preemptive version of the shortest job first. Okay, so so it's a little bit different from shortest job first, whereby uh, your process of running may be interrupted by other process who are having a higher priority. So in this case, who are having a lower burst time. So each of the arrival. Um, for this processes, you got to check the CPU burst time. So for this case, at time equals to one, right? When there's an arrival of a new process, I need to check back, right? What are my time right now? So for this case, my A at time one will be equivalent to how many left? Because I initially have six and I already run one, so I will be living five here, right? And my B, of course, uh, just started with three. Okay, so between five and three, who is having a lower CPU burst time? Of course, B is having a lowest burst time, so it will actually interrupt the process A and go into the execution. Right? So I have no choice but to let B going in. All right, so A will be panning right until it comes to its turn. Now again, at time equals two, C and D has been arrived, right? So 
in this case we got the Chang again who's having a lower uh, burst time so let's move the uh, time over left 5 B will be moving 1 so I will be leaving 3 minus 1 to the seconds here right and C and D has just started with 4 and D 2 right so now look at the uh, uh, small table here I actually have 2 milliseconds as the lowest CPU burst time so which should I go B and D right both of them are having the same 2 milliseconds so in this case if there's a uh, same similar reverse time occur so we will apply back uh, the first come first serve policy right so in this case B has been arrived at 1 milliseconds and D only arrives at 2 so there's no doubt that you need to let B go in right so because B is going to go in so B will actually continue the process right uh, towards time equals to 2 okay and uh, B will actually finish up the process right because it's left 2 so B will actually end it at time equals to 4 alright so at time equals to 4 when the process ended again we need to check back each of these processes reverse time again right so in this case at time equals to 4 my A still left 5 okay but my B is currently 0 right and C is the same for and D equals to 2 right so for this case we're going to compare again to get the lowest burst time and uh, at this time 4 D is going to be uh, having a lower burst time so D is going to come in next right which is having 2 so we'll be ended up at 6 right so at 6 again when the process finish again uh, it's good that you have a small table again to always check so because B equals to 0 so it's, it's actually not necessary for me to move the data again so I can proceed with C or and D currently is equals to 0 All right so between A and C again I have 5 and 4 milliseconds so of course C is a lower reverse time so we'll be going in All right so C will be going in for 4 milliseconds and I have 10 here All right and again I check back you know after C finish it will be become 0 right and then A still continue with uh, 5 left All right so obviously A is going to be the last one to be continue the process right so again I put in my A here and I finish up the gun chart right so I can just have it here and just draw it to make it a complete gun chart right so this is how you get the uh, gun chart illustration okay to represent the shortest remaining time first.